Right now, I would not put them number one, but that's to be told. There's still a lot of seasons left to play. Right now, I have the Heat at number one just because they are the defending champs, and they beat, they beat the Pacers, they beat the Spurs this season. So as of right now, I don't think you could say that the Thunder right now are better than what the, Heat, the Heat's team is as a team. They're not better. Do you think he's going to be able to put up the same numbers when he's shooting no, the No, obviously his numbers are going to go down, but I'm just saying. Do you think like, it's going to affect him, though, when he comes back? Well, together? obviously his numbers, it, it, the numbers shows that it goes down after Westbrook comes back, but the two of them together are and what about, unstoppable. And what about when Dwayne comes back on the floor come June for playoff That's time? if he's healthy. He's going to be healthy, and you that's know he's going to come healthy. the ball. Uh, well, that's, that's remaining to be seen. Absolutely not. There is no one out there right now in the NBA that is doing more for his team than what Kevin Durant is doing. He is single-handedly winning games for his team. Right now, he has 11 games consecutive with, uh, you know, 30 points a game. You can see the numbers right there on the screen right now. 38.3 points per game in the last 10. He also just tied a record with uh, Michael Jordan for consecutive games with uh, 30 points per game. No person out there that's more beneficial to their team than Kevin Durant. I think without Kevin, they'd be sub 500. With all the injuries that happened last week, you know, uh, what do we think here? What, what, what injury do you think hurts the uh, what's team the most? I think Sam Bradford is going to have the biggest impact on his team. Another ACL injury. Sam Bradford was doing great for that offense. He was really, you know, moving things along. He was being a great quarterback. He was obviously a future franchise quarterback for the St. Louis Rams. Still is going to be long road recovery. I think he's going to have the biggest impact. They're going to have to sign someone this week because they don't have anyone reputable as their backup. They did. They signed uh, Brady Quinn. So they just signed Brady <laughs> Quinn. <laughs> right? uh, St. Louis fans. Good luck with that one. Next year, Louis. hopefully Sam Bradford is back and ready. Hopefully he comes back just like the way AP came back and has an all-star year when he comes back off this injury. They say to these kids that are coming in now, they say, listen, this is a new Penn State. We're not about that anymore. We, you know, Joe Paterno wasn't here, it's sad to say, but, you know, we got rid of all that coaching staff. We're not about, you know, that bad light that we once were. You know, if you come to school here now, you're going you're gonna to play in a bowl game. We're going to get you to the next level. We're going to get you to the NFL. Penn State is mostly about coaching. They don't really care about the kids that are coming there to just be there for two years or three years to be a junior and leave. They want you to be all there for all four years, coach you and build you into an NFL prospect. As of right now, they are the best team in the NFL. They've beaten everyone on their schedule. I can't see anyone else that's doing any better. I think... Broncos are obviously very close to number two. Obviously, you know, lost recently this week. Close game to the Cowboys puts them maybe just a slight hint under the Chiefs, I think. You know, that was a very competitive game as well for them. But uh, Andy Reid's doing great things in Kansas City. I'm sure Philadelphia Eagle fans aren't too happy about that one. <laughs> Played host to the Cal Balkans from the Convocation Center. What happened in that game, Freddie? I mean, you can see Talon had a great game, putting him up 20 points, but on the other side of the ball, she had eight turnovers. A Turnovers were a big issue for uh, IUP during that game. That's, I think, what slowed them down the second half there when they were making that comeback. Um, 24 points in the paint, so that's great for the big, big girls down there, down low, getting points up in them, easy baskets. Cool. I mean, Nettie Blake is huge. Is huge for Gannon. She is their all-star. She's their go-to player, putting up 15.1 per game, getting uh, eight, eight and a half boards a game. That's huge for them. Uh, for IUP, that Maria Math, she, I think she's a player you need to watch for this game. If she can go out and get those 10 points a game, maybe put up 12 points a game, grab a couple boards, that's, that could really swing swing the deal for IUP and get them to win this game. I think Wareham has great potential for IUP as she gets a little older and wiser with the ball. She be a great point guard here. Certainly. Soon. Only a sophomore as well. She's very I, young. She has a little bit to learn. but Looking at her career high total, she had a career high six points as the ball is tipped again. Yeah, Mercer is a very young team. I think you know they have a lot to develop right now. They're only like one seniors on the floor. I think he's getting most of the minutes. So they'll, they'll develop over the next two years, and they'll be, they'll be in contention here Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. Yeah, they're really a, a young team. Should be a pretty solid group in a couple years Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Over their offensive foul, that's Natalie Pia Jesse. Great, great defense by Stoner there down low, not to give up a position. Yeah, a little too blatant there. She saw you saw the extension of that forearm, and we go, call that every time. We go with the press again. A couple series there for IUP. Yeah, she's a great player to come off the bench, give you that little energy boost, and give you you know a few points in here and there. Maria Mass checking out. She's had a great game today so far. Uh, she had a three ball, a few assists, she has six six and eight rebounds. It's a great day for her so far. Yeah, seven points. That press is working very well for Mercy here, so you know that's that's two times now they got them, so Yeah. IUP See looked like they were able to work to, or not. They looked like they were able to break it a couple times, but it gave them some fits once again. But I think we're gonna get our first media timeout. So at 15 11 8. Katie Cattuso, certainly a it's Leslie Stapleton who's been heating up from behind the arc. It's another three. This contest, 79% free throw shooter is Amy Fairman out of Marion Center High School. 
She's got five early on in this game. Have a push now, 41-29. Yeah, that's a couple fast break layoffs. Used to look like <laughs> split backs, very few subs. They give to Newhouse. Newhouse, big opening to the right, 10, 5. He plows his way close to the end zone. Side is Matt McAdoo's. Offset eye, they give to the deep back lead, into the secondary, to the 10, cuts it outside, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we have a Wildcat touchdown. 13-0 homer center with 10.41 to play in the first half, and for Ian Lee, his 11th rushing touchdown of the season. Don't you like Ian's chances when he's one-on-one -on -one with a safety like he was there? Just a little shoulder move, and then he slipped right by him, just a great run, and that's a big score. That's <laughs> Second down and 12, and Brzezanski turns hands so he protects the ball into the secondary to the 50, the 45, to the 40, breaks toward the right sideline to the 30. They're not going to catch him. He's at the 10, the 5, touchdown, 59 yards for Ian Lee. Coming in for the score, and uh, true, true to my prediction, Mike knew us down here on the sidelines rooting for him. <laughs> That's where he should stay, too, on the sideline. His second touchdown of the night for Ian Lee with exactly 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. Hard to believe, Ward, if they convert this two points. In A holiday called Day of the Dead? What is it? And how is it celebrated? Hi, I'm Brandon Byrne, and I'm here to tell you more about Day of the Dead and how it is serving IUP. Celebration takes place on November 1st and 2nd in connection with Catholic holidays All Saints Day and All Souls Day. Some traditions include building private altars honoring the deceased using various materials including their favorite foods and beverages of the departed and visiting graves with these as gifts. After the closing remarks, 19 faculty members participated in the breaking of the ground. <laughs> Construction of the new Humanities and Social Sciences building is expected to begin in spring of 2014. For the IEP News Center, I'm Alexis Johnson.